Welcome to Create Income Coach. I'm Jamila Harris, your Create Income Coach. And we're coming to you again from St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands. And this is part two of our hashtag Feast in a Jar video. Whole new perspective and Janet Homestead where you are invited us to a challenge to put a meal in a jar. So we're canning this as pressure canning. Our previous video is really short. Take a look at it. We showed you how to set it up. Now, these are warm sanitized jars. This is warm hot chili. We have warm water over here and our canner is also already heating. So now we just need to get the hot chili into the hot jars because when you put a warm product into your jar, you're going to want to have warm jars, warm canner, and everything must be warm. So this is warm canning, okay? As in temperature-wise, heat. As compared to raw pack, which is everything is cold. The jars are cold. The meat is cold and so forth. And the key here is that the USDA, and you want to get their guidebook, the USDA has rules for safely canning meats and foods that are non-acid foods. And so you want to get that guide and follow it so that you know the rules for how long to heat your food, what pounds of pressure to use, what tools to use, and so on. I want to also give a shout out to Homestead Hart, who is who I really learned all these up-to-date details about canning from. She is absolutely the queen of canning, pressure canning and water bath canning, as well as she and her husband have a homestead where they do a lot of growing and gardening. So Homestead Hart, you have to check her out if you're planning to do any canning. And also, want to give a shout out to Lead Farmer 73. That's Lead Farmer 73, L E A D Farmer 73, and his beautiful wife, Lady Lead, who both also encouraged all of us to really get engaged with canning and preserving the foods that we're growing for storage in our homes. So, it's an awesome community. These are skills that we all need to have. As food gets more expensive, the only way to keep your cost down is to buy it as cheaply as you can and then preserve it in ways that it will be preserved for years to come. And this is one of the ways you do it, by canning in mason jars, what's pre predominantly known as mason jars. And it's actually glass jars. And sealing the food, preserving it with a pressure canner so that it's properly sealed, properly cooked, and so on. So now my next step is I'm going to put hot water, hot jars, hot water, to hot canner okay you got it so now I'm gonna add a little hot water to each jar and you notice that again for your details about how to can properly please please do your own research check out the masters I'm no way a master of this at all but I'm just doing how, what I've been taught. So now I'm adding this hot liquid because turkey, this is ground turkey and red beans. Ground turkey, unlike beef, does not have a lot of fat. So when I cook this in the pressure canner, I don't want the jars to get just dry. I want them to have some moisture in there. So since the turkey is not going to give a lot of fat, that's why I'm adding the water. And the reason I'm adding hot water is because my jars are hot, my 
canner is already warm, the water is already warming. And so when you put hot jars and hot chili, you have to put hot water and then put it in the canner. So now the next step I'm going to do is known as debubbling. And it's just to get bubbles out. from each jar and you, as you do this you'll actually see air bubbles escape and after I do this I may need to add more liquid to each jar. This chili is going to be phenomenal. I heavily seasoned the ground turkey and cooked it with onions and garlic and Oh my goodness, bay leaves and red chili peppers. And so the seasoning is in the ground turkey, which I did not cook all the way through. I cooked it just to just before it's done because it will also continue to cook in the pressure cooker, pressure canner. And then the red beans, now preparing your beans from dry beans, and I'm trying to master that art. I started with Two, two and a half pounds of dry red beans and I soaked them overnight and then I put them in my pressure cooker to soften them up. Dry beans can be a little tough after they've been sitting in those bags. So I put them in my pressure cooker and soften them up and then I combined the pressure the, uh, the turkey with with the um, beans and now I'm going to just use a little vinegar and clean around the tops of these jars because now I'm going to put my tops lids and bands on and you want to make sure there's nothing still residue around the, the rim of the jar so it won't would keep it from getting a good seal. Because once the seal, listen folks, the beauty of this is the food that you put in this jar will last for years once that seal is done. You know how you buy canned goods and you see how it's sealed kind of forever until you open it? Well, that's exactly what pressure canning in these jars does. Anything you put in these jars pressure can properly with the proper temperature with the proper tools those lids will seal and that food is good in there until you pop that lid so check out those other channels homestead heart and lead farmer 73 and lady lead and you'll see how long some of their foods have lasted in these jars this is a very old practice it's not new. It's just that some of the rules for how to do it safely are new. Okay, so this is an example of putting on your lid, which has the gasket underneath, and then you just finger tighten the band. Okay, so I'm putting on the lid, and then I'm just finger tightening. That means I'm not cranking down on it the band and these have been heated for sterilization as well put on your lid and finger tighten the band and here's another lid and finger tighten the band these are pint sized jars that I am filling for my husband and I. When we open one of these pints, it's good for a meal for the two of us. So you can use quart size jars, pint size jars, half pint jars. It's up to you what you're canning, how big your family is, and what you're trying to accomplish. All right, guys, it's that simple. These are ready to go in my warm canner now. 
Let me move these things around so that you can see. One second. My canner is already warm inside. Okay, so now I'm turning the heat under my pressure canner. I use a Presto pressure canner. Just to show you, my pressure canner has a dial, a gauge on it. It tells you how many pounds of pressure. And when that gauge, where I live, I'm fairly close to sea level. I'm not more than a, a thousand feet above sea level. And you see where it says 10, when that pressure gauge gets to 10 pounds of pressure, then I make sure that I check and regulate so that my food cooks for, or processes for 75 minutes, 75 minutes once that gauge gets to 10 pounds. I also have a little pressure weight that goes on my canner top. So this jiggles and wiggles and makes, makes me know when it's under pressure and when it's time for me to, to start the timer. Now, the water's warm, the jars are warm, the hot chili's warm, everything is warm. So now I'm putting this into my canner Let me see if I can turn this a little so you can see the canner. I'm putting these into the canner, which is also, the water is already warm. My canner will hold, this is a 23 quart, um, no, I'm sorry, it's a 16 quart Presto canner, which is great for beginner. And so it will hold, though for pints, it will hold about eight pints. Half pints, it'll hold even more than that. It'll hold nine or more half pints. Okay, so now the my jars are in the canner. I'm just going to let you see this. I hope I can let you see it. There they are. So this will be chili in a jar, a meal in a jar when this is done. It's going to process for 75 minutes after the canner is under 10 pounds of pressure. So all I have to do here is line this up and close it. And once that gauge says 10 pounds of pressure for 75 minutes, it's a wrap. So again, thanks so much to Whole New Perspective and to Janet Homestead, where you are, for inviting me to join this hashtag feast in a jar 23 challenge.